In this video, I will show you how to use the Autumn effect with Affinity Photo to create a really effective glow. A macro to achieve this effect can also be downloaded, just check the video description for the link. And if you enjoy this video or find it useful, then please like and subscribe. There are many ways to achieve the Autumn effect. It's used for many things, especially in landscape photography, as in this image, where it's used to add a soft glow to the waterfall and to the green moss. Usually the Autumn effect is achieved by adding contrast, blur, and a little bit of sharpening to counteract the blur somewhat. In this video, I'm going to be using the Autumn effect to create a really nice soft glow. And this image, which has a slight natural glow, is a really good candidate. Okay, first things first, let's add the contrast. And to do this, we will use the Levels tool. So, Adjustments and Levels. Bring up the black slider to bring down the blacks. Then bring down the white slider to increase the whites. As this is a glow effect, we will blur the whites and lighter colours whilst having less blur on the darker colours until we reach black, which will have no blur whatsoever. The white areas here and the lighter colours will have the majority of the glow, aiding into the darker colours down to black. OK, so we've used the Levels tool to add the contrast. That looks perfectly fine to me as a base for the effect. Maybe just a tad more white. There we go. And that is the contrast, the first stage. So next we need to add some blur. For this we'll use Gaussian Blur. So Live Filters and Gaussian Blur. We have our Gaussian Blur Live Filter just above the Levels Adjustment. The first thing we need to do is to select Preserve Alpha. And that will just make sure that we have the blur effect right to the edges. Now rather than being a little subtle Autumn effect, this is a big glow using the Autumn effect. So to achieve this, we need a very big radius. And I think I'll just set it to 100 for now. I could even type in a higher amount if I wanted a larger, softer glow. OK, that looks fine to me. At the moment, as you can see, the whole image is blurred. Everything. We don't want everything blurred. We only want the highlights to be blurred. So first I'll group these, make sure the Gaussian Blur is selected, then shift and select the Levels Adjustment. Right click and group. And now we can do something with Affinity Photo, which is really cool. If you're an Affinity Photo owner, you're a lucky person because we can use Blend Ranges. With the group selected, just click on this cog and up pops the Blend Ranges. Because I have the group selected, the blend ranges will affect the whole group and not just the individual filters. By grabbing this handle on the left here and dragging it down, I can reduce the effect of the group on the blacks. And as you can see, instantly we have a glow. Well, I don't have time to totally explain blend ranges here, but the quick explanation is the opacity or effect of the layer or group can be controlled by the blend ranges. From black to white, left to right, it's 0 to 100% of the effect is applied. By moving these points around or adding new ones, you can change the opacity or effect dependent on the luminosity. With blacks at the bottom and whites at the top, no Autumn effect will be happening at the black and maximum Morton effect at the white, and everything in between. Fantastic. And there we go, we have a basic Autumn glow. We've got it. Even though this is an Autumn effect glow, obviously it's far too harsh, and has no sharpening. With our group selected, open the opacity drop down here, and bring it down. And then, depending on your image, set the opacity or the glow to the amount you wish. I'd normally make it subtle, but this time for the video, I'll make it a little bit more pronounced. There we go. Before and after, we have a lovely glow. The dark colours are not glowing, and the light colours are. We only have one more job to do, and that is to bring back detail. We need to apply a little sharpening into the blurred areas. 
Now the blur is more in the lights than the darks, so I'll add detail more into the lights than the darks. And the way we're going to do that is to use the high pass filters, so live filters and high pass. First things first, change the blend mode to linear light. You could also use something like soft light or overlay, but I found for this that linear light works pretty well. And then just set the radius. Now I found that around three is fine for this sort of resolution. It's image dependent. The problem we have though is that we've sharpened the whole image. If we turn it off and then turn it on, we can see it's even sharpened the dark areas, which aren't blurred. Let's use our old friend blend ranges. Select the high pass, select the blend ranges icon, bring the blacks down to zero, so then we will have no effect in the blacks, maximum in the whites, and everything in between. Now if we take a look, the dark colours are not as sharpened as the light colours, which is where we had our blur. The sharpening matches how much blur we have, scaling from black to white. Excellent. To make the process a whole lot easier, there is a macro for you to download. Take a look at the video description for the download link. Next we'll take a look at the macro and show how you can have a little more control over your glow effect. Let's just install the macro. You'll need to make sure your macro panel is visible. If it's not visible, it's usually about here, then just go to view and studio and macro. Now on the macro panel, select the import icon. Navigate to your download directory, mine is PC downloads, and double click on the macro file. And there is the macro with all of its steps. Now we want to add it to the macro library so that we can use it in the future. Just click add to library. Then name your macro, I'll call mine Autumn Glow. And then once you've named it, just hit OK. Once you've hit OK, the macro will appear in the library, like so. Then with your image selected, just hit Autumn Glow. And there you go, instantly you have a glow. I don't need this anymore. Let's have a look and see what we can do with the macro. Open it up, and there you can see the contrast, the blur, and the sharpen. They're all there, and they're ready to be played with. The first thing I'll do is to increase the amount of glow. Using the Glow Group Opacity slider, I think I'll go overboard with it just for effect, just for the video. Next, I'll go down to the contrast, and I will use that to reduce the range of the glow to reduce the reach. If I pull the whites over like so, and then the blacks over like so, now less of the blacks or darks are being affected. So it's only affecting the highlight colors and the roll off here is in the midtones. If you look here in the trees, and I move the sliders here and here in the water, you can see we now have a more localized glow which suits this image better, I think. Really nice. And I think what I'll also do is just to go in and reduce the blur a little bit, just a tad. This will make it even more localized. Okay, that looks pretty good. Then I'll reduce the sharpening in the highlights a little bit just by reducing the radius. I think for this image, it's just a tad overdone. And also I'll reduce the sharpening opacity. It just looks a little too sharp. The image was quite sharp to start off with. Bring down the opacity there. Let's take a look at before and after. Before and after. And that is an autumn glow effect using Affinity Photo.